So the question today is, how can you get your wife to fall in love with you again after a separation? Sadly, that's not really the reality that I'm in. My wife and I have been separated for almost 11 months. The divorce will be finalized in about a week, and I don't see any signs of a future reconciliation. Hopefully that's not the case with you, and that's what we're covering today in this video. Hi, my name's Jeff Campbell. I'm from divorcedparentsclub.com, and I'm on a mission to help people work through through the challenges of separation and divorce, both pre-divorce and post-divorce, relationships with the ex, new relationships, maybe affair partners if your spouse cheated on you, and some we'll get we'll cover some parenting issues as well in future videos. But today we're looking at how do you make your wife fall back in love with you after you've been separated. The first question is, can that happen? Can your wife fall back in love with you? And of course the answer is yes. Love it ebbs and flows, and women are emotional beings, and we're talking about emotion, the emotions of love here, and so they could very easily fall back in love with you. It's just gonna require a few things from you and a few things that you don't do. And first of all, I don't want you to take things too fast. I don't want you to put pressure on her to reconcile or move back in if she's moved out or even to label your relationship. Take things slowly. Focus on just you as a person, as a man, and her as a woman, and do things that you enjoy doing. And that can just be dating. Maybe it's even once a week at first. Don't rush. Don't put pressure. That pressure can make her run in the opposite direction, especially if she's been dating or was having an affair or maybe even still seeing somebody. You don't want to put that level of pressure. It sucks to think that your wife might be sleeping with other men. I get it. My wife's sleeping with somebody else right now and has been for a while. I get it. That sucks. But if you have any hope of reconciliation, don't put pressure on her to end things with the other guy. Don't put pressure on her to be exclusive with you. Don't put pressure on her to move back in. Just take things slowly and let them progress over time. If your goal is to win her back, this is a must. The other things, I don't want you to push her away with what what uh, there's a website called Marriage Helper that refers to these as push behaviors. I don't want you to push her away by being needy or desperate or clingy. I also don't want you to lose your shit all the time and accuse her of things and fly off the handle every time something doesn't happen exactly the way you want it to happen. You're a man if you're watching this video probably. You need to be stoic. You need to be solid. You need to be unmovable or as Coach Corey Wayne says, unperturbable. In other words, you're just the mountain and and the, the storms are crashing around you and, and the weather's changing and there's snow or rain or whatever and you're just there. You're solid. You're not going anywhere. That's the strength that your wife needs to see from you in order to feel safe enough to want to come back to you. The next question, is it too late to win your wife back? In my case, it's sure looking like it. Our divorce will be final in about a week. So I think for me, it's probably too late. Not that, you know, People do get remarried after a divorce is finalized, you know, upwards of 15% of the time. That does happen. I don't know that that's going to happen in my case, but is it too late for you? And of course, the answer is it's really never too late, but the further you go down that road, the, the less likely it becomes. And the more of those so-called push behaviors I was referring to a minute ago, the more of that you're doing, the more damage you've done, the more you've pushed her away. So how do you turn that around? Well, you, you first just focus on being the best version of you that you can be. Stop those push behaviors. Keep yourself calm and centered. If you need to get back in the gym or start spending more time outdoors, start meditating, do something that helps you relieve that stress and that tension so that you can be that unmovable mountain, that solid person that she feels safe around. That's gonna be the best thing that you can do to win her back. And ultimately, it's really only too late if she remarries to somebody else. Any time before that, it is possible, but the further down that road you go and the more bad behaviors you engage in, the lower the chances. The next question people have is, should you tell your wife that you're separated from that you miss them? 
And in most cases, I'm assuming this will be where you've moved out or she's moved out. Uh, so you're not around each other all the time. But should you tell her that? And the answer is no. And I know that might seem counterintuitive. It might seem like, well, surely I should let her know that I miss her. But that seems needy and desperate, and that's unattractive behavior. It's going to push her away. You don't want to do that. Now, if she asks you, you know, hey, um, do you want to get together? Or, you know, or if she says, you know, hey, I really miss you. It's okay to, to say, yeah, I miss you too. It's, it's okay to respond like that, but you don't want to do things that she's not doing to you. Uh, another thing that Coach Corey Wayne says a lot, and I mention this in many of my videos, is match and mirror their behavior. So if she's confiding in you about stuff like that, it's okay for you to do a little bit of that back. But remember, you're the man. You're the masculine force. You're unperturbable. You're unmovable. You've got to remain solid. You don't want to seem overly emotional. And I know women, my, my wife used to say this to me all the time, she would want me to be more emotional. But the reality of it is women don't really want that. They think that they do, but they want their man to be strong and solid and unmovable and somebody that they can count on and feel safe with. And if you're too emotional, you're not going to be that way. You're not going to come across that way. It will push her away. So a little bit of that is fine if she initiates it first, but I don't want you to just be sending her texts, barraging her, being needy and desperate. That's just going to send her running in the opposite direction. The next question people have, and there's a million videos on YouTube about this, is should you go no contact? No contact, of course, is where you don't have any contact with them whatsoever. And I know most people say do go no contact. What I'm, I'm going to do a slight modification of that. I'm going to say don't initiate contact. Don't text her. Don't call her unless she texts or calls first. Don't stalk her social media. Don't like or comment on her social media. I do want you to present the idea that you know, you're going to be fine without her. I do want you to present a little bit of that. If you seem needy and desperate, which is what's going to see, it's going to seem like if you're commenting and liking her social media, that's unattractive. So you do kind of want to present the idea that, you know, I can take this or leave it. If you don't want it, great. I'll find somebody even better. You do want to have a little bit of that attitude, that swagger, that confidence. Women love confidence. So you do want to have that. But I, if you have absolutely no contact whatsoever, and if you're not even responding to the contact you get from her, then there's no way for her to see that you are now the best version of you that you can be. And you're this person that she used to see that maybe you drifted away from over the course of your marriage, and now you're back to being the person that she fell in love with. She can't see that if there's zero contact. So do respond to her communication. Respond in the same way that she communicates with you. If she calls you then and you don't answer, call her back. If she texts you, text her back. If she's sending you multiple sentences in her texts, respond the same way. If she's sending three word texts, respond the same way. If she takes forever to reply to a text, then take forever to reply to her texts. But do respond to all of her communication. Let her initiate the communication and then see where it goes from there. So how do you get her to fall in love with you again? How do you actually do that? The first thing, like we've talked about, is avoid anything that's gonna push her away. That includes neediness, desperateness, cleanness, controlling behavior or angry behavior, accusatory behavior, trying to rush things and trying to label things, trying to push her maybe to end a relationship that she may have gotten into bef before the separation or during the separation. Don't push her away with your behaviors. Remember, you're strong, you're solid, you're confident. You can take this or leave it. That needs to be your attitude. And you need to be solid like that in order to attract her back. Then focus on being the best version of you that you can be. If you're a guy, you should have a mission. You should have a purpose, something that drives you. That's not just working a nine to five job that you hate. It should be something that is you have a goal for. And it doesn't have to be an immediate goal. It could be five, 10 years down the road. The best goals are long-term goals. But have something that is driving you, a mission, a purpose. Have something like that that you can focus on that takes up some of your time. That you, So that way you're not just sitting around hoping she'll call. Focus on your physical health. Get back in the gym if you've neglected that. Focus on your mental health. Start meditating, doing 
yoga, martial arts, something like that. If you've neglected your friendships, which most married guys tend to do over time, get back to really connecting with your friends and doing things with them a couple nights a week. Focus on being the best version of you that you can be and do that consistently over time. Remember, words don't really mean anything. You can't tell your wife you're doing these things. You've just got to let her see it and, and experience it over a period of time. And then she's going to be like, wow, he really has changed. It's, words don't mean anything. If you, you can tell her all day long, but she needs to see it. She needs to feel it. She needs to experience it. Remember, women are emotional beings and they're going to respond emotionally, not logically. Then the last thing is don't put her on a pedestal. Don't be so desperate to win her back that you're like, you know, doing everything for her and, you know, she's on the couch eating bonbons and you're just like feeding her by hand and you're massaging her feet, you know. Don't do that. That's unattractive behavior. She, at best, is your equal. Make sure you treat her that way. But having said that, remember, marriage or a relationship, you are there to serve. You're not there to focus on what you can get from it. You're there to focus on what can you give to the relationship. Now, it can't be all give and no, and no receive, but your purpose is to give. You've got to remember that. Just make sure it's an even playing field and that you're not worshiping her or putting her on a pedestal. So what are the key takeaways I want you to get from this video? Focus on being the best version of you that you can be. Get back to doing the things that you love and that bring you joy. Then I want you to not do anything that could push her away. Neediness, desperateness, anger, trying to rush things, trying to put pressure on her to label things or even reconcile. Don't do anything that pushes her away. Do remember that you are there to serve, not to focus on what you can get from the other person. You're there to serve. And while that needs to be equal, you, you don't want to put her on a pedestal and, and worship her, but you are there to serve. You've got to remember that. You're there to give. What can, so, so think about what you can give to the relationship. And then lastly, don't go full no contact, but don't initiate contact and don't contact her in ways that are incongruent with how she's communicating with you. In other words, if she sends you a three-word text, don't send her a novel back. Don't use every form of communication from her as an opportunity to like have a State of the Union discussion about your relationship. Do exactly what she's doing. If she takes a long time to respond to your texts, take a long time to respond back. Do exactly what she's doing, and then just let things slowly progress. I hope this video helps you. If it did, please give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you get notified of future videos that I'm putting out. If you have an idea for a question you'd like to see answered in a future video, leave that in a comment down below. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.